that makes time. Communicating with your team. Tea leaves, the bag had split. Oh. And initially we went out, going home with a van, yeah. borrowed van. The same freedom, the same trust. That's priceless, in fact. Exactly that. Leadership, it can be just like herding cats. Ever tried that before? Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the Leadership Herding Cats podcast. Today we're going to be discussing if it's possible to have a work-life balance as a leader or business owner. I'm joined today with by Mitch from Magic Cleaning Solutions. Hello Mitch. Hi. Hi. Hi um, Mitch was on a previous podcast around what it's like to be on the receiving end of a shit leader. We'll put a link on the episode number on that in the description if you want to jump over and listen to that episode so mitch tell me a little bit about you to start with just to remind the listeners so you've been in the industry for over in the clean industry for over 30 years you've yeah. been based around sort of sales of equipment and products and you started off selling soft drinks i, I did when i was yeah. 19 yeah. going to corner shops and fish and chip shops <laughs> and selling my Corona. <laughs> that was when the returnable bottle. Returnable you get, bottles. You can get 10p back. <laughs> Excellent. Um, but since that point, obviously after a, a bad experience with your, your last employer, um, again, check out the other episode there, um, you've gone out on your own selling cleaning supplies yes. with your business partner, Greg. Yes. So we started trading in... Uh, 2018, June, so we're coming up to five years, or just about five years. We registered the business in January 2018, and initially we went out, going home with a van, yeah. borrowed van, just, you know, getting out to seeing clients, um, and yeah, we've grown the business very successfully in that period of time. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a good place to be, I have to be honest. Yeah. So... Yeah. And, and do you find the work itself, because it's very similar work you're doing, isn't it? But so do you find it different? Does it feel different when you're doing it for yourself compared to being employed? I think you find yourself a lot more um, accountable. Okay. Because when it's for you, you have to get things right, you know, yeah. or we want to get things right, you know, uh, for many reasons. One, yeah. for, you know, your integrity, but secondly, to make sure that you're keeping your books up to date for mm. HMRC and everything else, you know, that is. Um, so, yeah, I don't think you ever really, really switch off. Yeah. Um, I think it's a very difficult uh, one when you you have your own business to working for someone else because yeah. you kind of go home and then you when you're working for someone else you go home and then you just prepare for the next day when you get up the next day I yeah. imagine you know so yeah. um yeah I think you especially when you employ people you have that accountability to them to make yeah. sure that you know we're doing the right thing by them mm. you know making sure we're uh, yeah, the health check and health and safety checks are done and everything like that the vans are working properly and if they got the right ppe and everything so you find yourself a lot more accountable to people yeah um it's different i think when you do it for yourself i think we're both greg and myself are very passionate about our business we like what we do and that helps you know mm. i couldn't imagine working in a job that i didn't like yeah you know um doing what i do um and it's ever changing, so that's always quite nice. Is 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 challenging as well. Um, but just to um, it is a different perspective when you are a employer or you're the leader yeah. of a, a business because you know you have that accountability. Yeah, I always for me, I always find that discussion quite interesting. It's always something I I tend to ask because apart from. I think a, a six month period where I had a part time job, you know, transitioning from a previous business to this business, I've always been self employed, even, um, you know, from 12 year old, I was self employed doing silly little bits and pieces, I left college was self employed um, straight away. So that's why I always find that that interesting. And for yourself, moving from su such a similar role, but employed to self employed or, or business owner, um, I just thought that would be an interesting perspective, really. So yeah, it is. It's, it is different. Uh, you're you're you've got people. You're responsible for to pe for people. Yeah, you know, and I think that makes a difference. And it's how you look after them as well. I think is yeah. really important. So you know, um, 
Yeah, I, I would never go back to working for somebody else now. No. You know, I actually enjoy the challenges that being a, you know, a business owner mm. has. I actually love, I thrive on it, if I'm totally honest. Mm. I may sound quite sad, I think... but I love the achievements and I love the, <laughs> I like the achievements. And I, you know, you accept that sometimes you'll get, you know, knockdowns as well. Yeah. But I think you balance it out and you're doing it for yourself. Mm. And I think, you know, that grows from your passion inside. I, that, I mean, that resonates with me, obviously. You know, again, you know, I, I knew I never wanted to be employed by someone else. I didn't want to work for someone else. I wanted to have my own thing, do my own thing, be in control. I mean, I am a major control freak. <laughs> um, so uh, I could get that completely. But actually, from what you're saying, the thing that I think of straight away is the majority of business owners actually don't last. I think it's something like 5% of businesses actually survive. Um, it is a, a crazy amount. So I think most most business owners that that give up go back to self employed. Quite simply, they're sane. Um, I think that's what it comes down to. I, I, I've got to say, it's not for everyone. You no, know, it's no. not for everyone, and it's hard, mm. especially when you're starting out. You know, and you you're taking those baby steps. Yeah. You know, and you're thinking, goodness, I we want to push this forward. We have to take on people, yeah. you know, to be able to do that, so they can do the things that we're not maybe so good at. Yeah. So you have to take those people and train them up to do the roles, so that you can take the business forward. Mm. Um, and that's a, such a big responsibility. Yeah. And finding the key people is really hard as well. Getting the right people, yeah. but I think once you got that and y- you lead by example. And I think that's the thing that you have yeah. to do is because, you know, the people we employ are an extension of some of our clients. Yeah. We're delivering to some of our clients' premises, you know, so we're an extension of their business as yeah. well. So it's just, I mean, you know, yes, we shift a lot of boxes, but we do cuddle on the way yeah. through. And when we stack them, hopefully we stack them neatly and tidily. But that's us showing our staff how to, mm. to do the set the standards yeah. that we what we expect. Yeah, yeah. There's lots lots of scary moments, and you, you said then sort of coming back to in the early days what you have to put in and the sacrifices you have to make, don't you? Because I think that I I've never met anyone that started a business or owns a business and honestly it went as they thought it was going to happen. Um, I I've been asked multiple times what's it like to own your own business should I own my own business should I start my own business and I always answer the same thing well yeah if you're a little bit mad maybe um because this is the brutal truth of it because you have to know what it's like and it is I mean I remember when we started here we were working 14 15 hour days seven days a week yeah simple as that I Uh, don't doubt it and you have to wear so many hats yeah you know you know some days I could be a delivery driver yeah not my forte, but I do it if I have to. If yeah. my, my customers need their stock, I will go out and deliver, yeah. you know. Um, some days I'm an accountant, some days yeah. I'm a sales professional, and some days, you know, I'm just a an order picker. And, a, you know, yeah. and there's nothing wrong with any of those jobs, but it's just being able to wear all those those various hats. Yeah, you know? it's, it's having that ability to switch, isn't it? I mean, it's, it's like this morning, you know, I've, I've come in this morning and I'm managing customers or you know straight away that's the first thing i've done as soon as i've walked through the door i'm then doing cash flow and forecasting and all those sorts of things and then within 30 seconds literally we're sat here doing a podcast marketing and all all of that sort of thing my the rest of my day is meeting after meeting to manage other people's responsibilities as well so it's that that's what it can be like isn't it so with all that in mind it kind of begs the big question the main topic of why we're here do you think it's possible as a leader to have a good work-life balance i think when you start out it's quite difficult because you want to get everything right and you're very um but i've got to say you know i think it gets a little bit easier i mean i haven't worked so hard for a previous company and staying away from home mm. i no longer have to do that i sleep in my own bed every night and there's something to be said about that yeah um so i'm not s- sitting in some um hotel room in yeah. god knows where in the in the country um and likewise greg greg was in london so many 
times with his previous um with our previous company and he had two young girls under five i mean mm-hmm. to not be able to put your own children to bed on a night time is it must be a hard ask mm-hmm. you know and he can do that every night now yeah and he's able to take them to their clubs and their taekwondo and karate yeah. and netball and everything else and um, i mean my daughter's grown up now but you know i'm home every night with my husband you know having dinner together and yeah, I mean, I tend to personally start work quite early, usually between 6, 6.30. Um, I mean, not be early to a lot of people, but, you know. Um, and, you know, it may just be a little bit of admin or seat checking, you know, there's any for any orders and things like that, or doing the bank allocations. It may be that. It may be, you know, just a task that needs doing. Yeah. And then, you know, I might get myself out the door for about half nine, ten o'clock, go and see some clients, you know, and then come back, you might do some admin, send some quotes across. Um, so, uh, and then I tend to switch off by six o'clock um, on an evening. Mm. I kind of think that's a long enough day, 12 hours maximum. And then my time's my own then until the next day. I choose to put in what I want to put in to make sure everything, all the boxes are ticked. Yeah. You know, that we're doing everything right, that you know orders key on correctly there's you know you're following up quotes and things like that but to feel relaxed when you actually do press that off button yeah whether that's shutting your door getting out your car or turning your laptop off or or locking the office to be able to have a clear head to go home and not have to worry about anything I, i have to say you know that's hard to achieve to begin with, mm. but you do get there and it can be achieved. Yeah. Um, and totally, Greg and I have got a better work-life balance now than we have ever, yeah. uh, you know, previously. Because I think, and some some people aren't going to like this, but I honestly believe to achieve a work-life balance, and that's different for everyone. I think everyone has a different opinion of what their balance is. Um, you know, some people want to work every single day some people only want to work a few days a week that's the balance and you need to decide everyone needs to decide what their balance is but i honestly believe that if you if having a balance is a priority it comes down to the choices you make yeah it's not having the time it's making the time um and that goes whether you're self-employed or employed business owner or just a, you know a leader within a, in a big business it comes down to those choices you make. And I um, I suppose that's a, quite a big statement for me to make considering I've just said that, you know, I've never been employed by someone else. But ultimately, if you can't have the balance you want within a company where you're working, then surely that company is the wrong company. Mm. That's, no, that's I, the way I would look at it. I think it. you have to make it happen. Yeah. You know, you have to make your work-life balance happen. Um and everybody enjoys a bit of leisure time, yeah. you know, you know, whether it's sitting in your garden or whether it's going out socialising or for a meal or, you know, just going for a walk. I think if that is what I call me time, yeah, you know, um, and your shoulders are dropped and you feel relaxed, I think it is mm. so important for mental health, for your physical well-being um, to get that balance right. It needs working on. It doesn't happen oh, yeah. overnight. You cannot make that. You know, it, there is a switch, I think. Yeah. And you know when that switch, you can put that switch on. Yeah. And, you know, Greg and I, you know, we we say to our drivers, you know, work hard Monday to Thursday. Mm. Friday, if you're done by lunchtime, go home. Yeah. Have that extra couple of hours on us. Mm. You know, you've done your work through the week. It's really important that you kind of share that with your, your staff as well and know that they have a work-life balance also. Yeah, and I think that's the thing is, you know, like I was saying, a lot of it is down to prioritising your choices, prioritising what you want, and that's the decisions you have to make. It won't work, straight, like you say, it won't work straight away, especially for, for new business owners, and it won't work all the time. I mean, you know, last week for me is a prime example. Um, I was supposed to be off Friday. I got to nine o'clock Friday and Thursday night. Didn't know if I was going to be off Friday. <laughs> um, I also shouldn't have been working at nine o'clock Thursday night, but... The majority of the time, it works okay and I, I have a good balance. Um, I think so, especially if you have a family, a young yeah. family, because those, those 
key moments when mm. they're growing up and so quickly yeah. to be there for them and uh, if it's just to read a book at bedtime or to bath them or yeah. just to give them some daddy time or mummy time do you know yeah. i think it's really really important that you know you share that time yeah um w- with them and also um it helps with their development yeah you know yeah. and you know i think you know looking back at what how we used to have a, a working stupid hours i can remember getting up one morning at uh, three o'clock and leaving my house at about half three in the morning mm. to drive to lincoln Oof. that's a four-hour drive yeah oh funny story do you want to tell you yeah yeah, yeah. always so, like funny stories <laughs> I'm going up to Lincoln and there's a service station I stop at on the way up. It's kind of a regular thing. It's about halfway. Everyone gets to know their service station. Yeah, stations, I think it's near Coventry. I used to be able to name them. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and then um, I went in, I thought, oh, going to the ladies, came out, oh, I'll grab myself a cup of tea. Got one from Greg's with that sippy cup thing. I hate those sippy cup yeah. things now. This is why. Got on the motorway, driving up, mouthful of tea tea leaves the bag had split oh. and I had nowhere to spit it <laughs> I was like driving up the the M6 or M1 or whatever it was and I'm like I'm I'm gagging and I'm like oh I didn't have a tissue and I just think oh. before we dive too deep into this week's podcast I want to tell you a little bit about our sponsors which is Vapor Clean Commercial Cleaning Services Vapor Clean provides commercial contract cleaning throughout the southwest if you run a business with premises that need cleaning on a daily basis, then we can provide that service for you regularly, sufficiently, and consistently to the highest standard. We provide trained professional operatives that are audited and supported the right way, making sure you have the highest standards all year round. So if you wanna know more, get in touch. But for now, back to the podcast. And anyway. That was my funny story. So, yeah, I can remember getting up there for eight o'clock. Yeah. And we were mobilising a big contract for, for a council. And I got there and I started work and I had mountains of stock to move and I had to break it down into kits. Yeah. I think I finished there at probably about half seven at night. I was absolutely on my knees. I went imagine. back to the hotel, didn't even fancy anything to eat. And I thought, why am I doing this? Yeah. You know, I'm working for someone else. I'm not being rewarded for this. Um, so I think when we made the switch to to run our business, it was really key that we mm. built that into uh, our work life balance into our yeah. lives, and it's happened. I mm. have to say, but quite successfully. You know, I might say to Greg, "I'm going to have a couple of hours off this afternoon." He's, yeah. No worries. Because you'll know I'll, if I need to, I'll log on at the weekend or on an evening, yeah. uh, and and deal with anything that needs to be dealt with. Yeah, you know, um, and it has to it has to be like that. You know, I'm in a much better place than I have been for a long, long time in terms yeah. of working for someone else. You know, so. And I think, like I said, I think that's the thing, though, isn't it? And it comes, like you said, it comes down to leading by example. And if you've got the understand in some circumstances, it might not be fast to make changes. And it, maybe it's not possible to make changes in some businesses. Um, you know, I suppose here in, in the office is a prime example. If we were to close earlier, for example, during the week, we, we'd probably lose quite a lot of business because that, for us, that half four to half five is actually a really busy period of time. Um Whereas on a Friday, we do, we finish at three o'clock because that's possible and it, it helps the team here finish earlier. Our technicians finish at one o'clock on a Friday. So I think there are ways that you can look at the business, assess the business and find how to make it a more a balance, more achievable. Yeah, um, absolutely. And I think if you if, if you look at productivity, yeah, if you can improve that, yeah, that makes time. Yeah. And if time is the key factor in having a work-life balance, then you have to look at ways to do things s- smarter. Yeah. You know, and if, I mean, it, it, we speak to our IT, you're very aware of uh, who our IT provider is, yeah. um, our software provider, we speak to them and say, can you do this? Yeah. And I go, actually, yes, we can. 
And it yeah. might be just a click of a button or a mm. whatever they do in the background. Coding. I'm sorry. <laughs> Is it coding? Oh, I, I don't know. know. I just thought it sounded good. We have IT, <laughs> IT experts. So, I'm looking um, at Craig behind the camera. It's just in fits. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, it probably is called coding. I don't even know what it is. I don't know. It's probably another language, and I think it is. Yeah. Um, anyway, uh, and they'll do something. It might be just something like on an order. So you yeah. may place an order with me, and it might have 30 lines on it. And I might go, have oh, I got all of these lines on yeah. here? And they've just numbered it for us. Yeah. So I can go, oh, actually, boom, done. And that's it. Say, that may be only 30 seconds, but if I'm doing that on 30 orders, you know, that little bit of time is me time I could possibly yeah. be having and that, that's me sound selfish but it's not it's... well you say that but then so if I if I think back and I laugh I laugh with the technicians these days because if I think back to when I was out on the road as a technician I bought and it was something stupid like 450 pounds at the time um, and my dad said I was mad but I bought the live TomTom. Tom. It was one of the very first that was out. You didn't have Google Maps back then, um, but it was the live TomTom Tom with the, the, the live traffic and everything else. And I bought that because I figured if I could miss traffic once or twice a week and I could save five or 10 minutes, that was half an hour. Mm -hmm. And that was around the time that my son was born. Um, and I mean, I'll never forget the words that my dad said to me when I rung him. I, after my son was born, I rang, I rang him and I'd, he'd said to me a couple of weeks before, you do realise when you have kids, you'll never work as hard as you do currently do now. You won't want to do it. Me being me, no, don't be silly. It'll be fine. I'll carry on. It won't be an issue. Um, probably five minutes after my son was born, I was on the phone to my dad and I just literally rang him and said, um, it's a boy, dad. He's here. And the second words were, <laughs> yeah, I'm not working that hard anymore. And, and that's it. And that's what I did. The next week I went out and I bought this sat nav to try and save myself time. And I sat there one week and I realised I'd saved, in one week, I'd saved two hours. That's amazing. Yeah. That is fantastic. But that time, those two hours, that means you bath your son every night and you read yeah. the book to him or you have a little cuddle and you have daddy time. And there's nothing that is better than that, surely. No, no there's not. There's, there's really not. And like, these days, I'm... Uh, unless it's absolutely necessary, I'm in time at home, in time to sit down and have a dinner, a family meal, all four of us to sit down and have have a meal, um, and I put them to bed. It's it's simple great. as that, you know, and and that's it. And I have done. That's priceless, in fact. Exactly that it is, and you can't get that time back. And you know, you've you've got you've got children yourself, and it's when you look at them, you just get older and older don't they and it's like overnight they've gone up years so yeah when my daughter was born back in 97 um i had another business then at the time yeah. Sim similar to what i had but a lot smaller when i was a partner with two other ladies yeah and um she was born uh, just before christmas um and i was expected to go back to work six weeks later really and it's yeah. my, I have to say, that is the time I would have loved back. Yeah. Because you know, I was yeah. having to put it with my sister it, through the day yeah. or into a nursery. Um, and, and But I needed to work. But yeah. my business needed me yeah. because I was a sales contact. I was the mm. one going out getting the business. Yeah. So they said, can you come back three days a week? So, yeah, that was tough. And I would mm. never wish that on anybody. Not to kind of, you know... The time with your children is priceless, I think. Um, and yeah, that was probably one of my biggest regrets. Mm. You know, and I've tried to get a work-life balance, you know, quite stable. Um, in the it's certainly in the past few years, especially as you get getting older, things take yeah. a little bit longer. And going up the <laughs> stairs now is like taking me the best part of a thirty seconds, whereas I used to dash up in yeah. ten. Um, but now, you know, I think. As I'm coming towards my twilight, as I can yeah. see the mistakes I made, and I, I think you have to work to get that 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 level right um, between go go go. Otherwise, you just stop. You burn yourself out completely. Yeah. And I think we've all been a burnt out. I, you know. Oh yeah. You know. I think yeah. some weeks are harder than others. Yeah. Um, I, I remember when we first started, and it was physically full on you know we were up silly hours you know 
loading vans, getting stock in, taking stock out and just delivering because we needed to. Yeah. But then when you start to employ people to do those roles, you then be able to take a, a little step back and, yeah. and focus on what you, you, you know, your best hat to wear is. Yeah. But then, so stepping away, looking at it from a slightly different perspective, obviously most people that know me know that I'm up at four o'clock every day. 4 a.m. I go out and I'm up my horses out and things like that. So I'd also say that one, decide what your priorities are. Mm-hmm. Um, if that balance is important to you, make it work, make it happen. Um, and two, try and be inventive with what you do and how you do it if you need to be. Um, and for me, that's what I do is I, I'm up earlier in the morning. Yeah, I go to bed a little bit earlier in the evening. Um, but I'm up early in the morning and I'm out mucking horses out because horses are my me time. Um, I obviously spread myself very thin because I do have kids. I have the business and I have the horses as well. So, and that's kind of where it spreads through, but you have to make the time for whatever is right for you, don't you? Because you, you like your holidays and yeah. you were telling us earlier, going on a cruise. And, yeah, and next month uh, to celebrate my uh, big birthday. Um, and uh, yeah, I love my time traveling yeah. with my husband, you know, seeing different places. And, you know, I think it's important to step back from work. And it'd be the first time I yeah. probably had two weeks off of work for in a long time. Yeah. I don't think I've had two weeks consecutively off of work for many many years yeah. I think you know it's I've been a week here and a week there and so I am really looking forward to yeah. it you know I'm on countdown now so imagine. you know but I dread that when I look at the you know the the calendar uh, the, and see Greg's off and I'm going oh god <laughs> right hands on deck so yeah. then I have to wear Ed's hat but then he'll wear my hat yeah. for that fortnight because we you know we rub along really really well yeah but we have different of responsibilities within the business yeah you know i mean we're both salespeople, but there's other bits that we have to do as well yeah but i'm also subbing stuff out now to mm. to, to uh help me to a virtual assistant yeah. to give me some so they do the jobs that i don't really like do, yeah. doing and are probably not playing to my forte it might be just a bit of a back of house admin yeah but just to um have that me time back yeah. It means I don't have to do it. But I think that's that's also another another important factor, isn't it? Is knowing where your weaknesses are um and trying to just help that help those weaknesses, make them less of a difficult task, whether it is outsourcing, whether it is passing it on to a colleague, or actually just going and getting some training on it so it's not making yeah. it making it so hard. But I know that's what I've found over the years. I've, I've had to delegate and I've had to improve myself and, and things like that. And I also have to remind myself constantly that I need to take a break and do things else because I'm I'm not a workaholic. Honestly, I think if um, if I could, I would work less. Um, but in the same sense, I'm I'm always I'm quite um, addicted to things. So once I start, that's it. I've got to, I've got to finish it, and yeah. I think that's quite difficult as well, really. A, a little key thing I always do at the end of the day: if there's a job I need to do tomorrow, yeah, but I've got a little bit of time, I bring that forward. So I'm managing delay. So do I, yeah. And yeah. you just think, and I always do the thing I hate doing most first. What's the? There's a book on that. Is it Eat the Frog? Oh, is it? So eat the frog. Yeah, that's what they say. So you should do the 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 worst bit first, clears up the rest of the day. Otherwise, it actually slows your mind down. Yeah. So it will slow you down. So, um, and so obviously, Greg, your business partner, he's he's similar as well. You say he's got a young family, things like that. He takes part in the PTA, I believe, as well. He's a governor of the governor. school. There he's a governor yeah. of a school. Greg likes responsibility. He's yeah. brilliant at it. He belongs to a lot of um, clubs and things like that. So I, it's, and if that's what you enjoy doing, yeah. then do it. Yeah. You know, it's not for everyone. It's not for me, you know. Oh, but, no, I couldn't think of anything worse. No, <laughs> no, but he actually thrives on things like that. And, yeah. you know, he belongs to lots of different it clubs you know because he's a cavey member and you know but he makes time for it now yeah so like he'll say oh i got a meeting at four o'clock today can you you know can you hold for it you know and i say yeah that's no, fine mm. you know as long as you communicate and you're not just go a and nobody knows where you are because that's I, th- I think you know 
play to you what you want to do. Mm. I think you have to make you know your your, your life a better mm. uh, place to be. You know, and I think it. I think you touched on this earlier on as well, though. With that in mind, and obviously both of you as as business partners work together doing that. But for me here. Um, I'm constantly trying to remind people and encourage them sometimes actually because I think potentially people can feel a little bit awkward when they're part of a business not necessarily the business owner about making sure they do have that balance making sure they're um, not overstepping the mark and things like that prime example I had an email um, yesterday from Kim who does our recruitment and everything saying she's got to take her car in for a service on Thursday um, do I mind if she if she takes her car? She'll do a bit of work on the laptop while she's there. Then she'll come in a bit later and do some stuff. And I'm like, Kim, manage your own time. I, I, I trust you. I know mm. you'll get on with it. And I know you're dedicated. Just do what you need to do. If you don't want to come in that day, don't come in. If you want to work from home, if you want to work from there, just let me know what you're doing. Just communicate. That's what you need to do. Um, and I, th- yeah, because I think that's leading by example is one of the biggest things. Um, communicating with your team, giving them the same freedom the same trust that you kind of expect you know i i sit here sometimes and i think i don't want to leave yet because no one else is ready to leave and there's only 10 minutes before the office closes so i'll just do another 10 minutes just just so i I leave at the same time as everyone else um but then in the same sense i've had times where i've gone it's dead today come on let's close the office up and let's go home and people look at you in shock like what what but it's not half past five yeah, but it doesn't matter it's dead you've got nothing else to do you're literally just sat there waiting for the phone to ring yeah um put the answer phone on deal with it the next yeah. day yeah it's it's 10 minutes if they ring in 10 minutes time it's going off anyway so uh, let's just hope they ring in 10 minutes time and not in nine minutes 30 seconds no exactly. <laughs> I, think, I, I think you know if you if you can uh, show that to your staff that you have a, a decent work life balance yeah it, kind of makes them feel like it's a good place to work. Yeah. And I think that's really important as a leader to to be able to say, right, oh God, yeah, I was up early mucking out the horses, but that's me time. That's yeah. my thinking time. You know, I may be doing a physical job, but do you know what? It's what's me I love to do. Yeah. Um, and if, you know, it's going to a, a governor's meeting, if that's what you love to do, do it. And I think if you can show that, I think it... it it improves the relationship with your staff um, and, you know, you get a better um, uh, you know, uh, feedback from them, you know, a better feeling of family. Yeah. And I think that's really important. I think your business and our business are quite, kind of, you know, rub along really well. Yeah. You know, because we've got same values. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, that's one of the reasons we asked you here today, because we, we knew these discussions would be would be good discussions and provide some um, good thought provoking things for for the listeners. So um, and kind of on that note, we, we said before, you know, when you've got that balance and you've got that trust of your team and they've got a balance as well, like you say, it increases productivity. I think it just makes a better culture. It makes a better environment. And I think... You know, that's the type of things that all come in hand in hand with being a good leader, isn't it? Yeah, because absolutely. you're only as good as your team. Yeah. That that's the way I look at it. And um I think I can't remember who it was that told me before, but you know, the leader that feels that they are indispensable because they have to be there all the time is actually the leader that should be able you know, should be gotten rid of, essentially, mm-hmm. because the leader that doesn't need to be there all the time is the one that's got an effective team. The one that is, you know, their team knows what they're doing they're hitting targets and they're getting through everything and um i suppose that's what i kind of aspire to all the time is is making sure that my my team are happy they know what they're doing they're and, the they're, and they're able business, to hit targets they? well exactly yes yeah. yeah. like you said when you when your drivers and your team go into delivering stock if they're not happy if they're grumpy if they're over overstretched and everything else that's going to come across straight away to the customers that they're coming to mm-hmm. you know Absolutely. so it's i think it's very much about trying to find that for everyone isn't it yeah, I, I agree. And, you know, there is that kind of balance, uh, again, of, of making sure that you have, well, I do anyway, I have to make sure that I have that structure. So I know every day what I'm doing every week. Well, I've got a default diary, so my diary's set every week and that's what happens. Do you find you have structure or are you a little bit more of a free flow each week? Um, 
my my week changes depending on you know uh, what I'm doing. I mean, I've never done a podcast before, yeah. you know, so this yeah. is the first for me. I did say I had the face for radio, so yeah. you're filming me. <laughs> um, but um, I think I, it's a, it's a varied job. I yeah. think when you're a leader, it's a very job. Mm-hmm. I think you're doing, you're chucking lots of balls at all the time. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, one one or two times you might drop one. And yeah. then the other time you catch them. Do you know what I mean? So you have to um, prioritise what is the most important thing to do. Yeah. And, or the worst thing you have to do and get that done. Yeah. You know, and then I think by prioritising your workload, it's like, uh, what's more important? Is it... Doing the banking, or is it going out and seeing the client? Well, yeah. it's obviously got to go out and see a client. The banking can be done when you get back, or you know, or, yeah. or, or whatever. But um, I think it's just that you know, um, making sure you get all your ducks in a row mm. through the you know, your working day, so you're not having to think it at no. night. Yeah, you know, uh, yeah, uh, ult- yeah. I think you're absolutely spot on. Ultimately, for me, the biggest things that I I utilize and focus on is organization and communication. Like you're saying, if you're prior, you, you won't be organized if you're not prioritizing. We all have a long list of things to do. My list quite often feels like it's growing, not reducing. Um, but it is, it's a case of, it's the four D, D, D's, isn't it? Do, default, de- um, sorry, what is it? Do, defer, delete, or delegate. And I think that's, I think that's sometimes what it comes down to. You have Absolutely. to make sure what's, what's what. Um, and I think for me as well, think along those lines, like we've, we've said, basically find that balance, find out what your priority is to, to find that balance. But I also think as kind of a, a finishing note, I always remind myself not to beat myself up. Mm. Because as you just said, sometimes you are going to drop the odd ball here and there. You've got lots of balls that you're juggling and every now and again, you're going to drop one. Um, I'm not ashamed to say sorry to anyone. I, yeah. I think that's a sign of strength myself. I do as well. Um, if you can say sorry for something you've done wrong or a mistake that's made, then yeah, you've, you've got to be quite a big person in my book. Um, but many a time previously I would have beaten myself up if I didn't get home for dinner on time or that one night that I couldn't put the kids to bed you know like last Thursday I didn't get to put my daughter to bed um but we were up bright and early on the, on the Friday and we did make it to the show and we made it for our, for our day off um and we had an amazing day and I think she doesn't remember I didn't put her to bed on that that, that Thursday um and you know when she's 20, 25, I'm sure she won't remember that one day. She'll remember the other 360. The fact that she went to the county show. show Yeah, yeah, and everything else. And I think that's that's a big thing, basically, to make sure. I do. I think making memories is an absolute key with your your, your loved ones, you know, whether that be friends or family, you know. I think, you know, taking the time out to be with them. But you have to make that happen. Yeah, absolutely, definitely. Brilliant. Well, Mitch, thank you very much for your time today. You're I think welcome. your perspective on this has been absolutely brilliant. Um, I knew, I kind of knew where you'd sit. I think we 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 think along the same wavelength, and I can't recommend yourself and Greg and Magic thank enough. You. So, on that note, tell everyone how to contact you if they need some cleaning supplies. If you'd like to speak to me, um, my mobile number is oh seven four nine four four two four one zero four. Greg's is 07377-376-925 or you can email us at sales at magiccleaningsolutions.co.uk. Many thanks. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Um, And if you have enjoyed today, please do leave a comment, subscribe or share it with someone else that you think would find this uh, beneficial. Um, Thank you very much for your time. We want to deliver as much benefit as we can to you and we will hope to see you next week. Thank you very much.